Hello. 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 Whoa. Welcome to another edition of Supernatural Talk, our third episode. That's right. And wow. we just lost our guest. Oh, wow. Rachel. I didn't do it. Rachel, did he kick you off? Wow. Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? All right, we've already got some um, Facebook users, so whoever it is, make sure you give StreamYard per permission, if I could talk today, yes. Yes. to use your name. Hi, Mort. How you doing? Ray, hey. Oh, uh, Ray. Hey, Greg. Um, here we go. <laughs> hey, Ray. <laughs> see Greg. Hi, everybody. Yeah, Nick, if you can handle all of that, I am going to be sharing this show out. Yeah, I I, yeah, I can I can handle that. Um, meanwhile, our guest is Rachel Bradley, and she is with Flumeri Productions. So, for for the audience out there who may not know who you are, um, why don't you go ahead and um, introduce yourself? Um, all right. Well, my name is Rachel Bradley. Um, I am part of Flumeri Promotions, who uh, is. <clears throat> whoever the Facebook user is, thank you. I, I like to think I'm awesome, but I don't always know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I'm part of Flumeri Promotions, but I um, actually, um, me and my husband started out doing um, the events that they, the, that they were having, and Ray must have seen something in me that he liked and invited me to be part of RTL Paranormal which is his group that our private group that we're part of. And then um, he started Flumeri Promotions. I think, oh gosh, I'm probably going to get this wrong. He's probably going to yell at me, but March of 2020. And, Actually, I know uh, you're right. I remember it was 2020 when he started it. Okay, good. Yeah, like right before the pandemic started, he like was just like, this is a good idea. Um, and he started by getting some money together and bringing... Brian Murray, Rochelle Stratton, Daryl Marston, and Mustafa Gadalari to the Beacon Theater in Hopewell, Virginia, um, and had an event there. And as he likes to say, Daryl he really liked how everything ran, and it just kind of kicked off. From so, yeah, but I started off um, just going as a as a fan. In so many words, um, I got into the paranormal. After my dad passed when I was 14, I had a very vivid dream after he passed. Um, that was the most real dream. Is that real words there? Um, I don't know. But the most um, the vid most vivid dream I've ever had. And he took me to where he was living um, after he passed. And it was somewhere he always said he always wanted to live. So I know it was him coming to see me. And I was always into horror movies. I watched Cujo and it and the exorcist and all that stuff when i was a young girl with my dad my phone is going off right now if you hear you're killing me small i'm, sure I'm, going, I'm like what is that noise? Yeah, that's that what is that hold on one second i thought i put it on mute give me one second <laughs> i was actually kind of enjoying it was freaking me out a little bit <laughs> especially came right. to talk of horror movies <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that i thought i put it on mute but um yeah and then maybe you did maybe something turned it on <laughs> maybe who knows but um but yeah and then i just you know we were invited you know to be part of rtl and then um you know again ray saw something in me and he was like hey you know would you mind helping helping a brother out in so many words and getting stuff done and emails sent to different locations and just trying to set up events. Um, but that's, that's me in a nutshell in so many words, you'll find out I'm kind of crazy and kooky and just have a, a weird sense of humor and so, you know, in so many words and, you know, to say, so, but here I am. Yay. Thank you for having me, by the way. I appreciate all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> This is for David Children. Oh, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Read that between man. the lines. <laughs> Read between the lines. So, was it um, like working with all those goofballs? 
Um, I love it. it they, it, it's, it's like having another family that I've always wanted to kind of be a part of, um, you know, kindred spirits in so many words, people that have the same thoughts and the same, um, ideas and the same, um, wishes in so many words, I'm finding out what exactly happens after we do pass and go to that next realm. Uh, so it's, it's great. I love it. You know, all the talent that we have are absolutely amazing. Um, and I couldn't ask for a better group of people to do this, this thing that I love, which is the paranormal and investigating and, and trying to find out exactly what is going on at different locations. Um, and it's just, it's awesome. I mean, that's literally all I can say is, is just absolutely amazing. I love it. I couldn't ask for anything better. You know, my, like, um, my husband was the biggest skeptic in the whole entire world. You know, it's, it's weird. I was the one who was like, Oh, it's real. It's real. You know, I've watched all the shows growing up and just have met so many amazing people over the last, uh, almost two years now of starting and doing this. Um, but he was the biggest skeptic and I turned the biggest skeptic into a believer. So my job is done. <laughs> That's, That's not an easy life. thing to accomplish there. <laughs> it's not, it's not, um, you know, to, you know, kind of, you know, um, I can't think of what word I want to use, but to kind of, um, whatever on top of whatever I just said, Hauled him a mansion up in Pennsylvania. We were up there doing an investigation, my second investigation ever with Flu Mary, um, not as a team member or part of RTL, but just going up there as a fan. Um, he got touched at the same time that I felt a cold spot on a different floor. And he tried to debunk it all night long. I mean, without him, he he wanted to crawl up into the chimney in the summer house. And this is Amish, Amish country, Pennsylvania. It's 90 some degrees outside. And, you know, he could not debunk it. And then that's when he really, he got, you know, hook, line and sinker in so many words. And we've been doing it together ever since. And it's, it's a great thing. It's a really, really good thing. And, and Ray is, I can't say enough good things about Ray. He's like my best friend ever. I was about to say, oh. like he's got something good to say about you, but, and that's very <laughs> rare coming from Ray. Cause yeah. Um, sorry. I'm not even going to go there. Love you, Ray. I love you, Ray. What is this? You have so many problems with all these people. But that is so sweet. What is wrong with have you? Realize you have you realized they're all men? Have you realized they're all men? What did you do to them? I've talked to Ray several times. He is a sweetheart. I never have anything wrong. <laughs> yeah, no. Anything wrong? <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> no, that's something. Here we go down that rabbit hole. I'm, I'm still sharing this out, folks. Yeah, I, I was just sharing it out to myself. Yeah. What? Oh. Okay, I get it. Uh, you, what I heard was you're you're sharing it to yourself. Sorry. No, I was, I was sharing there. myself. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, oh, right. So I don't think I warned you. We are. Well. Most of us are kind of goofballs. Nick's still, you know, getting his age on him to be a goofball. But <laughs> everybody's a goofball when you're around. Yeah. You know what? I'm I love the only it. One here. Yep. I love it though. You know, I'm a goofball at heart. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer, you know, <laughs> you're only as you, you're only as old as you feel. So if you keep yourself young and you feel like you're young, then you're going to stay young. So what can I, I say? Like Body 14. tells you different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if somebody tells me different, they're going to get jab, jab, uppercut. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I liked you from the moment we talked. There, there you go. <laughs> so out of all the places you've been to, like, well, let me ask you this. Um, so you've, have you been to a lot of places first and foremost? I know you're part of Lemiri and, mm -hmm. you know, with RTL, but have you gone to a lot of locations? And if so, what's your favorite? 
Um, I've been to a lot of the ones that are on par um, paranormal bucket lists. Um, I went to, we did um, an investigation. <laughs> right, really? My cute, my cue cards, really? <laughs> How much did you pay her, Ray? Yeah, How right. Much did you pay her? <laughs> Zero. Zero. Well, just like this. Zero. Um, okay. but no, but um, yeah, I've been to um we did a private investigation actually in May of 2020. We did the Bel Air House and um West Virginia State Penitentiary. Um uh and those were two, you know, very, very good places to go to. We didn't get a lot of activity, but we the stuff that we did get was direct communication. We had um, in the seance room at Bel Air House, for example, we had K2 meters sitting around REM pods, and it was literally going from different ones in front of different people as we were asking questions. Um, I've been to, I've been to Trans Allegheny. Oh, gosh. Um that's you know, one place I would love to go to, yeah. Trans Allegheny. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool you, you know, it's 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 funny because I mean we we got some stuff, but it wasn't as active as I thought it was going to be. So I want to go back again and see if we're able to possibly get more evidence and stuff like that. But if you want, if you really want to know what my favorite app absolute favorite location is is old hospital on college hill in williamson west virginia that That's place that was crazy we went there last december um and had a two-day event there and we had a doppelganger of me um we had when no one was in the building we had the keys to the building no one was in the building you heard Pat, she's another team member on RTL. She's my best. She's my bestie. She's my sister wife. Hi, sister wife. Um, she um, actually, you can hear on the recorders we left. You can hear her say, "Okay, guys," or "Okay, guys, come on." And we're we're already in the hotel, passed out. Like it's like two thirty in the morning. We had trail cams that actually went like this and moved, and then moved back to the to the original spot it was placed in. Um, I was upstairs um, helping another one of our uh, RTL team members, uh, Ben Honeycutt and my husband, uh, like kind of clean up and, you know, get things set up and stuff. And I had told them, hey, I'm going to go back downstairs. Well, as soon as I went back downstairs on the, on the first floor, they were up on the third floor. And my husband said he heard me say, hey, Kev, Cause that's what I always say to him. And he's like, yeah, babe. And Ben's like, who the hell are you talking? Oh, I'm sorry. Who are you talking to? And Kevin's like, you know, Rachel and Ben's like, Rachel's not up here. So it was, it, but old hospital out of all of the locations I've ever been to old hospital. If you ever get the chance to go there, please go because that place is absolutely amazing. We got pictures. There's no door. Um, and it looks like someone's standing there, but then the next picture that Nick Beckner took, he's part of Flu Mary Promotions as well. He does amazing photography. I'm, I'm throwing everybody out there. Um, he does amazing photography. You can actually see a hand coming out of the wall. There's no door and it's a hand coming out of the wall. Oh, wow. That's my absolute favorite location. So out of all of them. I can't Hands wait to come out of the wall like Nick is coming out of his background. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, now it's all on me do it. <laughs> I can um, read it. Did you go to the Masonic Temple in, in Kansas when um, they had their event over there? I'm sorry, say it again. Did, when when Flumeri was in Kansas at the Masonic Temple, were you there? I no, I, unfortunately, I was not. I wasn't there, but I heard they got some amazing um, evidence out of that place. And that place is is very, very active. Um, that's one of um, Mustafa's favorite places to go to, from what I've heard, from what he's when we've talked. Absolutely. So, yeah, well, all it. four of us have been there. And yep. It's it's an amazing place. It's awesome. That's, that's actually the place that the four of us. Well. I met the other three guys, well, including Adrian. I'm including you and the guys. Um, that's actually where I met everybody. Okay, just okay. checking. They're still there. What, what's wrong with you? 
<laughs> now you just also got back from um old park hotel which is one of my favorite locations yes we did that was my first paranormal experience was old park hotel was it really what did you get there what happened well okay so the trifecta event went off like without a hitch no, you know it was absolutely amazing um but we we had a lot of people so um we i wasn't able to get um a bunch of evidence at old park because there were people you know moving around and you know you heard the footsteps above you on the second floor when you're on the first floor and vice versa but the place that i actually and i'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it we were actually over at old runnels jail which you know obviously you know is right across the street well we were up on the third floor and i'd you know had some mini pot you know mini rim pods and rim and you know, like a rim pod set out and like cat balls on the third floor up where the juvenile cells are and where the the like the library psych ward like that blackout cell is and we got some cat ball playing a couple rip rim pods <laughs> and eileen eileen james i hate your voice yeah. <laughs> awesome <laughs> and see and i oh, hate my I, I hate my myself talking because i'm as southern not, as they come you know not to off, but this means read between the lines rachel so if you can read between yeah. lines you know what i'm doing to him right there right there i do it all the time i do yeah, it all we, the we time we got this right okay we got, we got this we got this girl we got this um but no but we were up on the third floor and i was like okay well we're not having much activity so let's go down so we went down to the second floor. Well, then right up above us, as soon as we got off that floor, we heard that shuffling, like, you know, feet going across the floor. And I was like, hmm, y'all hear that? And everybody's like, yeah, I hear that. I hear that. So I go up the stairs and I'm standing up there and I'm like, okay, if there's anybody here with me, can you make a noise? So on and so forth, nothing. Well, then as soon as I walk back down the stairs, for some odd reason, I don't know why, I was just, I whistled and I was like, just like that. As soon as I finished, there was a whistle right behind me and the biggest bang I've ever heard in my whole entire life. Like it made me jump. Yeah. And I was just like, Ooh, oh my God, I freaked out. Like every F-bomb came out my mouth that you could possibly think of. And, you know, and it was just, it was a, it was a, it was a neat experience, but I think it was just too many people, yeah. you know, like, combined in one space to really get that good evidence that we needed but i love old park i love connie and dan they are just oh absolutely yeah. just i was so excited about meeting them because on facebook obviously on facebook friends with them but um i finally got to meet them in person and they are absolutely beautiful so yeah that was, uh, my first joined the team. My husband's was, watching that we can come back down to twenty fifth. So yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Adrian. I'm team. sorry. No, you're fine. Uh a while back. And that was their favorite location because they used to live there. So that's where they took me saying because I was a skeptic. And mm -hmm. you know, they were like, Okay, I know you'll get activity here. Let's go. So we went. And I thought, yeah, okay. I took my daughter with me even. She was 28, but I took her with me and she kept seeing little orbs and she catch pictures of them. But I was like, you don't know what that is. Let's just put that away. Just put it away. Don't even say a word. And I had done so much research on Old Park before we went, just so I'd have something to ask. And what I found was killing Jim Miller. They called the deacon. Mm -hmm. Greg, you are a sweetheart. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've anybody's ever told me that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, so me and the team lead woke up about two in the morning. He said, come on, let's go. Nobody else wanted to wake up. So we went down the hall and he says, let's go in this room. And he had the spirit box going, you know how loud those things are. You can't hear anything past mm -hmm. them. And I'm like, ah, and he kept saying things that made sense, 
but I wasn't listening to that. I heard a whistle behind me. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no. Okay. Mm -mm. And I said, did you hear that? And he was like, no. Okay. I heard it two or three times. I'm like, it's circling me. I hear it. He's like, I don't hear it. I said, okay, never mind. Let's let's go. Let's pack up. We're done. And when we replayed the video, it happened seven times. And wow. you could hear it on that video. A week, a little over a week later, I was, I come home at midnight and I had this little plaque. It had spurs on it and, you know, a couple of little trinkets. Been on my bed for years. It fell down, hit my husband in the head and the spur went through his ear and into his head. And I heard that whistle. And it fell there last she did it. I'm like, all right. Yeah, he swears I did it. I'm like, I was asleep. But I heard that whistle that night. And I'm like, mm -mm, we cannot have this. But yeah. yeah, that was my first experience there. Okay. Now, are you going to be down there on June 25th? I'm hoping. I, I really am hoping. But we're supposed to be out um, in um, Illinois, the the 11th we're supposed to um we're not supposed to but we're having an event out at rock island ymca in rock island illinois um with melody knapp and i got my notes so if you see me look over to the side that's why uh, um, rachel there's yeah. actually a chance i probably will be there too because i live in the chicago area so i live in illinois as well oh do you really yeah okay yep yeah we're supposed to it's but yeah we're rock island ymca in rock island um um with with Kristen, Lou, and Maria Pradeshi, Melanie Knapp, and Madison, Madison Smith. So we're supposed to be having yeah. that event out there um, that weekend. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can make it back down for the 25th. I really, really am because I really want to come back down there. And because I really want to get that experience because Old Park has been on my bucket list for years. Um, I've wanted to go down there because. Be down there with Ray. You cannot <laughs> make me be down there with Ray. Without you. I promise you'll be all right. <laughs> Nick, I'm going to start calling you the great disappearing Nick Millay. <laughs> <laughs> and now he just keeps going. Well my going I, I and actually, coming. this time I actually have the yeah. lamp with me this time to keep it bright. And even using that, it's not doing anything. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they're at that uh, hospital that you were just at there in Ballinger. Isn't that also the same place where there's this um, haunted house just right down the road from it? No, that's Mineral Wells. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, David actually had a few questions here because he, he's been asking a few questions. Yeah. And I didn't want to miss them. Uh, I'll, I'll ask for this one. Uh, he's asking, what was your most favorite location where you have collected the best EVPs? Um, okay. So the, probably the location where we have caught the most EVPs is Applewood bed and breakfast in Williamsburg, Virginia. It's the most unassuming place you'll ever, you'll ever go to in your whole entire life. It's beautiful on the inside. It's beautiful. Um, and it's just, it's very unassuming. Uh, it's, we caught EVPs. We actually, um, there was something very bad that happened in a garage that's out behind the bed and breakfast. Um, and uh, I'm just going to say that a woman got very physically assaulted very badly. She's still living to this day, but there's just a residual in energy that's there. We caught a, um, a body cam. We left a body cam out there and brought it back in. And as we're listening, you hear a lady say, stop it. And then you hear a guy right behind it say, don't you like it like that? And uh, with like a moan, like he's almost Whoa. like you know, doing yeah. his thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, and then another time, I think it was actually the same, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the same weekend, me and um, – my other teammates, Pat and Dallas, who are another married couple that are an RTL and um, the, the psychic that we had with us, we were all, all upstairs and me being me, I'm just up there doing like a little shimmy and stuff like this, you know, blah, 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 you know, shaking my tail. And we called an EVP that said, I want some of that. Oh, wow. 
Oh, oh yeah, geez. that's so that's scary. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's creepy. Yeah, it was, it's very, and it's just, it's the most unassuming place. Like, you know, you have those places where it's very unassuming. This is the most unassuming place you would ever think to ever go to that you would find that was haunted. And we've caught some of the best evidence ever. We had a whole shadow figure. We, we tried to debunk it as much as we could. Um, but we had a whole shadow figure go like a, almost like a moth in so many words, but it was full bodied, went from left to right, back to left, and then just shot off. It was the weirdest thing ever. And that was the first investigation I'd ever gone on, the first EVP I ever heard, the first time I ever got touched, the first time I ever saw any shadow play. It was, it's just, it's a very unassuming place. So hopefully we can get back in there because it has changed ownership and um, we're trying to get back in there because the people that own it now actually own another house across the street. And it's right in the triangle of Williamsburg, Jamestown and Yorktown in Virginia. So it's, it's got all that energy just, you know, into one, one spot in so many words. So which loca which uh, remind me which location was it so that you had a lot of this activity again what was this place called Applewood Bed and Breakfast it's in Williamsburg okay. Virginia It's right actually it's literally right down the street from William and Mary College so Okay but it's right in that triangle of Yorktown Jamestown and Williamsburg <laughs> All right, so David had another question, which was, he was asking, have you ever had an attachment? Um, I have never had a negative attachment. I actually um, was told by a medium that I had a, an emotional attachment. It happened after we did a private investigation at Clifton Forge High School down in Clifton Forge, Virginia. I, now that you, now thanks, David, now that you remind me. <laughs> <laughs> um but no, we um, we didn't know. Like me personally, I don't like to know a lot of the um, uh, the history of a location because I don't want to get any preconceived notions. Oh, I should be looking for this, or I should be looking for you know this person or that person. I like to know a little bit, but not a whole bunch. But <clears throat> we were actually downstairs doing an SD session, and I kept getting rape, Ray, in prison rape ray in prison yeah. repeatedly rape ray in prison so then the mayor of the the mayor of the town actually um, um was with us and um he was getting noise in the headphones using echo box we were in the box sd7 or anything like that but we were actually using the echo box app and he kept getting the same thing um and i asked not safe down here and he screamed out no 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 just kept repeating no no so i was like all right i'm out i'm good and we actually had the cops in the town with us um but after that investigation i i, I felt like myself but i didn't feel like myself if that makes any sense whatsoever like my my emotions were all over the place and then we had another investigation the week after at the norfolk masonic temple where the medium was and she told me that I had an emotional attachment, how to kind of help get rid of it, you know, and tell it to go away and stuff like that. But I've never had anything negative attach itself to me. Thank God. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Eileen just texted me. She yeah. lost power. She's going through some storms she in her area. Bad storm, oh, yeah. there's storms going on. Oh no. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yep. So oh, that's why she's so gone. Cuter. Yeah, I, I, we don't know who this, who you are. You got to give. Uh, oops, I, I meant to. Jeez, it's my my computer's acting. <laughs> Did you just click that, Jeremy? Do you have a storm there? <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to. <laughs> Hello, Barbara. You are a Facebook user. Yeah, you got to let Streamyard. Uh, you got to let Streamyard get permission. Well, Rachel, I got I to gotta tell you this. Um, if you ever get the chance to, to go there, whether if it's for a private investigation or for one of your events with for Mary, um, Old Lake County Jail in Crown Point, Indiana. Yes. You will love it there. It's Jason Snyder. Jason Snyder. Okay. Oh, my back. <laughs> oh. 
I got, <laughs> I keep now I got to find out Ted. Now I did. I'll tell you what, Nick, you can handle the control. <laughs> <laughs> Any, meeny, money, mo. The other one's not getting it to touch him. <laughs> I'll take myself out. <laughs> no, if you, you go ahead. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just focus on the comments. So how's the storm we're, down we're the island? That commercial of you go, no, you go, no, you I, no. I, it didn't come back on either. I think we. Hey, can can y'all oh. hear me? Yes. Yeah. Can now? Yes. You're frozen, but we can hear you. Okay, now you're unfrozen. Oh, okay. You're frozen. There we go. Oh, <laughs> oh we just oh, and we just oh. lost connection. Oh. In Make out. a silly In face out. again before you freeze. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. The the jail in Crown Point. Um, you, you would love it there. It's it's an amazing place. Um. <laughs> For me personally, it's my favorite place to go to, and I always recommend it to anybody, whether they just want to go out there to have some fun or if they want to try to throw some sort of an event out there, I always recommend that building. Yeah, I mean, okay, well, that place yeah. doesn't disappoint me either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all send me that name because I will not remember, and I don't have my pen on me, so I can't write it down right now. <laughs> so one of y'all send yeah. that to me. So I can I can, I can get in contact much. with them, please. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> wait till she comes back on and sees that. <laughs> if she comes back on, if, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but but yeah, they they all got they do have some really bad storms where she's at. So I'm, I'm surprised, surprised her as earlier. long as she did. Now, you know what? I'm surprised my internet is doing as good as it is. So I'm good. <laughs> now, they, oh, wait, Eileen just said this. Uh, try to get back on, but the storm kicked their power and their internets. Okay. Oh, gosh. And she's here supporting, so. Eileen done gone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there was two other questions because I didn't want to miss these that uh, David also asked. I'm looking for. Oh wait, here's one of them. He asked, uh, "What was your most scariest experience?" Um. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I can tell you this one. Um, we were at the Shanley Hotel up in Napanock doing oh, one of sorry. our events, and uh, we were up on the third floor. It was all women. It was just us women. Me, um, the guys and the women had separated. The guys were down in the bordello area, and we were upstairs there. You walk up the stairs. There's three rooms on this side, and then you walk down this long hallway, and there's other rooms and stuff. But we were doing um, we were doing answering question sessions with some Dowson rides and another um, girl that comes to a lot of our events, Sandy. Um, she was using the Dowson rods, but there was just this one room. I just, I felt the energy coming out of it. And I was like, there's so, something about with me. I don't do dolls. I don't do creepy dolls. I don't do happy dolls. I don't do any kind of dolls, but of course this room had to have the doll. Have a doll in it. So I, I had to, you know, put my rim pod down there, but we were sitting outside the door and it was answering with the Dowson rods, you know, yes and no questions. And I said, okay, what room do you want me to go into? Well, whoosh, straight to that room. And I said, all right, I guess we're going into that room. So we walked in that room, you know, we're asking questions. Well, it was getting dark. And I said, and there, okay, there was a closet in there. And any good investigator, when you see a closet, you're going to make sure that door is shut. You're going to jump up and down in front of it, make sure it's not going to open on its own. We did all that. So I was like, well, Sandy, I can't see the Dowson rods ask, you know, answering the questions. And I'm, I'm going to go get my flashlight. She was like, okay. So I walk out. I go get my flashlight. As I'm walking back in the room, the closet door is opening in my face. I jab, jab, uppercut that thing screamed all all the girl came out of me Thanks, all, you know backed up out that room and that probably was my most scary and it was a door but it scared the living daylights out of me because that i know that door was shut i know that door was shut and latched and i mean just straight like this in my face 
it, it scared the crap out of door. me. It's not the door. It's what opened yeah, it. Exactly. Yes. It wasn't what so much the door itself, but it was like, how did the door open it? It's Charles. She had seen it there Charles. before. Like, she could not do it. She Oh, there I go. Okay, here I am. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, she's like, I've been mm -hmm. telling you to stop. Something was making me tell you, was there not you allowing go. me to tell you to yep. stop walking. And I said, it's all good. You know, but I screamed so loud that the guys actually heard me on the other side of the hotel. <laughs> they were in a completely different part of the hotel. So, Nick, what's with your background? That's probably there, my Jake? scariest experience so far. <laughs> You guys know every time when there's certain there's a certain topic that yeah. brings up, I always change the background. Rachel, if you didn't know, Nick is the king of backgrounds. <laughs> Whenever it's a particular topic, Nick, that's I try not to funny, man. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Jeremy, no. you got to do it. You got to do it. What me? Yeah, you got you got to show it. Oh, I think we just lost. Well, after we, just we get Rachel back. back. <laughs> The connection was really going out. I think <clears throat> close to the storm too, isn't she? Well, no, she, I, she lives in Virginia. Wouldn't that be pretty far? It's pretty far from Mississippi. Yeah, but I think they're having storms too. I'm not sure, but I know that they got scattered storms in Mississippi. But I, I thought she was in Virginia or West Virginia. I bet she was in Virginia. Yeah. Um. Oh, wait, there she is. Oh, yep, there she is. There she hey! is. Hey! <laughs> You're back. Hey! Welcome back. Sort of. I mean, there's still. Uh, like I still said, no, I, and I heard y'all. Yeah. No, I'm in, you know, I am in Virginia, but we literally live in a little a little county called Powhatan, Virginia. It's about 45 minutes west of Richmond, and we don't have high speed internet. We don't have dial up internet. We have satellite internet. So I literally am using my hotspot on my phone. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. apparently I'm supposed to do something. But before I do that, I'm going to bring up another question that David was asking yeah, I was much good. earlier, uh, asking about your outlook on shadow people and low manifest manifestation or high manifestation. Um, me personally, I think it's a high manifestation because it takes a lot of energy to actually be able to make yourself be seen, um, especially in shadow form, because with all the energy that it takes just to even get, you know, certain equipment and certain things to go off, um, for you to be able to manifest yourself into a, a shadow, like person, people, entity, whatever you want to call it, I think it's a high manifestation. That's just my opinion. But you know, everybody has opinions just like everybody has, you know, what's so. Okay. Okay. So, so before she brings this out, because poor Joseph, this came from the Masonic Temple. I uh, investigated this temple four times. The first time we went places nobody had went and found things nobody knew was there. This was one of them. And they said, I'm throwing this away. I said, no, you're not. I'll take it. I got it sent to me. I'm fixing to get foster kids. So I can't have it anywhere out in the open. So it had to go. So I went to go visit Adrian a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, I took a little cross-country road trip to Vegas for a national bowling tournament. And um, Adrian and Jack just happened to be right on the way. Mm -hmm. So I stopped in to visit with him for a couple of days. And about an hour after I got there, Adrian is saying, hey, I got, I got something to show you. I'm, you're going to take this home with you. Oh, I am? Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> so so she leads me to this room where I'm going to be staying at. And she points this out. <laughs> nope. nope. He's helped no. us before. It has went to every invest 
investigation with me, every hair crawling with me since I've gotten it. Two years. <clears throat> so, so the funny thing is, is that I have always loved this doll since the moment I saw it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Adrian can tell you, and Nick might remember this. I don't know if he was around at the time, but she brought this out when we were all at the temple. And I was like, oh, I want a picture, I want a picture, I want a picture. And, and, I got, and I got this, I got the picture with this doll with this madness look smile on my face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but never did I ever imagine that I would end up taking this doll home. Now, mind you, this doll has a glass head and they have stuffed like, I don't know if it's a, a time capsule. I don't know if it's a ritual. I, I don't know, but it was in the back of a closet and it was in a Masonic temple. So it's like, they had a room that was like for arts and crafts and they had huge stage for acting and all that. Mm -hmm. It was in the very back. What, the first time we visited there, there was a skull. And I said, this skull's real. And they're like, no, no, this skull's not real. It, it's a prop. I said, look, I'm country enough that I've hunted enough. I know this is real bone. See those little holes? That's where nerves and blood vessels went through. I, this is real. So they called the police, somebody they knew. They looked it over and they said, yeah, this is an adolescent to adult female. And yeah, it, it's real, but nobody's claimed anything missing. So it could have been a doctor that was part of the, um, part of the, Masonic crew, so they didn't think anything about it and left it there. But this doll has a bone in it that looks like either a neck bone or something. I, I don't know. I never had it analyzed. But I think uh, somebody said it was a fish bone. That was, yeah, that was never verified, and I don't think so. <clears throat> that was somebody who decided to take it apart. It was not a very good idea, but they did. And I ended up having to put it all back together. Mm -hmm. It's got screws for eyeballs. It has uh, a whip it from like a whipped cream can. It has twine in it, like maybe oh. hemp twine. It's got all kinds of things in it that I don't know where they come from or why, but they're all in there. I stuffed them all back in, glued the doll back together. The doll itself is from the 1800s. It's one of those that just has the square chest and they put the head on it. The rest is mm -hmm. a doll, like soft body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I don't know why they did what they did to it. But and and it looks like it's still the original clothing. It is. Um, from it is. back then, too. It is. Yeah. And that's why I never sewed it back together. I never did anything. I left it just the way it was. It has stayed on my bed for the two years I had it. People were telling me, oh, my God, it's demonic. It's demonic. It's not. I promise you, it is not demonic. It, there's nothing wrong with this doll. Yeah. So so now I'm trying to come up with an, a proper name for it. Um, <laughs> I've got a small list of names, but I haven't narrowed it down yet. I got a name. What you got? David Childers. <laughs> 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 um, I'm going to try to be on as long as I can if my phone will let me, but I can't see to walk around. I'm sorry, but I don't want a David Childers staying here in this house with me all the time. <laughs> uh, David, you still on? So you can say you can say you snuggled up with David Childers at night. There you go. Mm, yeah. There you go. No. Not happening. I'm here. <laughs> If, if you want my honest opinion, I'm hearing the name Samantha. For some odd reason, I'm hearing the name Samantha. You're not the only one that said that. Really? Yep. Hmm. Hmm. 
was about to say, what the hell was that? But I because I heard a door open and close. That was, that was me. I couldn't I couldn't see. And then my <laughs> internet's really bad inside. What's up, Chris? <clears throat> So there's yeah. one other question that happened to, to follow along. It's someone by the name of Eileen Jones here in the comments asking, <laughs> "What's your favorite equipment?" <laughs> um, I don't know who that crazy woman is. She's weird. <laughs> either I don't know who she is either. Um, you know what? I am a fan. I love reviewing audio. I love it. I can sit for hours and listen and just try to find. Um, anything so voice recorder that's always my go-to is my voice recorder but then again that's that is paralleled with the edi plus i love my edi plus too that is one of the best pieces of equipment we have ever invested in this whole thing um that we've started you know you cannot go wrong with the edi plus because there's nothing that can mess with it so if you get readings off of it something is interacting with you but yeah i i'm a i'm i've always i just love reviewing audio i i love it i my husband's like you're crazy you sit there for like five hours and listen i'm like i just i want to hear something i just i want to hear it i want to validate what i think i heard and i want to see if i actually caught it so probably probably uh, i don't know it's kind of a close competition between the edi and the voice you know and the recorder i don't know both of them can I have two as my favorite? I'll give, I'll give you two. I'll oh, give you two. Perfect. Good. Yeah. Okay, so the EDI Plus and the recorder. Those are my two favorite yeah. things to use. I'll tell you what. Now, my problem. I have heard nothing but good about the EDI Plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, I don't know about Adrian when she was in New Mexico, but the only problem I have with the EDI Plus down here in the south is the pressure and humidity change so much that I just have to, like, rule those – those indicators out. I'm like, yeah. my, the humidity all, I mean, goes off like crazy. So I'm like, just just don't pay attention to that down here. Yeah, and see, it's the same thing up here in Virginia because up here in Virginia, like the humidity, it's unbearable at times during the summertime. Um, so when we're using it up here, if it's like a hot day, we literally will do like a yes and no question kind of thing to see, to be able to debunk the changes from just the pressure and humidity in the air to if we're actually intelligently talking to somebody. So, yeah, I'm there with you, Eileen. I'm there with you wholeheartedly. I'll tell you with the recorder, the first time I ever tried really using it was at the temple. And we had a bunch of us down in the basement and I had just heard a whistle for some reason. That's how spirits communicate with me is that whistle, but it's a different tone every time. Like at the mm -hmm. old park, it was like a cowboy calling his horse. At the temple, okay. it was just a strange whistle. It wasn't a cat call, but it was a strange whistle. And I, I actually have the recording of this still where I said, you know what? I can't. Can you do that again? And it clanked in the kitchen. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go get some equipment because I can't communicate with you without it. And I took two steps. To, and with the lady that worked at the temple, we took two steps up this huge stairway and there was a big bang behind us, like somebody threw a table at us. And wow. she went to take off running. I grabbed her. I was like, we don't run. She's like, okay, okay. We're still having fun. Of course, by the time we got to the top, we're shaking because this should not have happened. But we went back yep. down. We started using the recorder. And I guess if it hadn't been for the camera looking at us at the same time, that I could put the words together while listening to the recorder. I guess I was grunting when I got up, but on the recorder, it sounded like something evil and it sounded like words. And I don't remember what words they were, but it sounded awful. And it, it, if you didn't have to debunk it, it sounded like some demon talking to you. So I, I like to debunk it like with a camera and, and go with the words that were said on the camera and see what was actually said at the time. So, you know, no, nobody was talking. You got that. You really got that. I learned real quick. You don't do that without the camera. Cause it was so awful. No, we, we lost Rachel again. Oh, she'll be back. Yeah, I can't tell. I can't tell if I'm spotty 
or what. Um, it's not that bad you're, out here. You're <laughs> fine. You're fine here. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, and we just Hold on. She's back. She's, oh, she's back. back. I'm back. <laughs> See, guys, it's not that bad out here. Oh, I mean, we got oh, lightning. I'm in the middle of okay. Jill. Yeah, Jill was asking about this. Um, they actually kept it there. It is still there. Most of its teeth are still intact. Its bottom jaw is mm -hmm. there. It's wired. Um, they don't let a lot of people touch it anymore till the, since they found out it was real. Um, but it is there. The police left it there because there was no missing person report. There was nothing. It could have just been a doctor who got a body donated and just took it there for a prop. I'm not sure what happened, but we did get a lot of readings off of just that skull. It, it was crazy. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's a oh, lot I'm going to tell you, I'm the body I hid there. I hid there. What was that, Jeremy? There's a lot of mystery around that building. Yeah, yeah. That big, there's like a furnace, and it's big enough to hide 100 bodies in. It's, it oh, in. yeah. It's like yeah, it was furnace. massive. And it yeah. heated seven floors, so it's like it was huge, but, and it was a dirt, like dirt floor. It was the very, very bottom. And they had a little place that slid where they would just dump coal and people would dump it in that furnace. You want to get rid of a body, it's gone. Yep, it's that's it. Right. It's, gone. it's over. It's nothing but dust then. Yep. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's, Rachel, real quick, before I forget, I sent you the name of that jail on Messenger. Yeah, I saw. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Yeah, I saw that come <clears> through, and I was like, oh, perfect. Awesome. That was also that where the elephant, you remember that story, Jeremy? The elephant from the circus came down? I I only heard about that one recently. They ended up having to um, dispose of that elephant because he's not going to go back up the stairs. I mean, he's done. He, he's, he's there. So... Yeah. I, I think that's how they disposed of the circus elephant there too. <laughs> Just a lot of disposals. I, I think it was. <laughs> I tell you what, men, the men that were the, the spirit men that were there did not want females there. They didn't like females. They don't respect females. They want nothing to do with females. Jill, oh. that, that jail was built. Uh, what was it, Nick? Like, it was, a, I think it was around 1880, uh, built in 1882. Yeah. And then it was, so it was 140 an years old. Yeah. And then it was, and then it was an operation until I think, well, I think until about 1968. Uh, I want to say it was longer than that. It's been a while since I've researched yeah. that place. I'm it, it started out as a small jail and then they just kept expanding. I think it went through two or three expansions before it reached the size that it is now. And that jail also used to have the original courthouse right next to it. And it had like um, like a vestibule that went, went from the second floor of the jail to the second floor of the court. And that was where they would transfer the prisoner from court to jail right after that. And um, it says here that is not there anymore. And it says here the building remained in use as a residence, I think, for the local sheriff until 1958. And I was actually just a few years behind. It was used as a jail until 1974. Okay, that, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. I knew it was a little bit later than the 60s. I thought it was 68, but I was just a few years behind. So it's 70. Yeah. So almost, I mean, considering it was built back in 1882, you know, almost for 100 years it operated for a jail. Mm -hmm. And... Um, let me, yeah. Then Jill had uh, another question, which was uh, I think this one was for, for you, Rachel. Do you use thermal and do you like it? If you do, what, what gets the best results? If not, um, I don't use a lot of thermal like flares and stuff like that just because I'm not. I'm one of those people, um, I like to learn a piece of equipment first before I really start. Um, using it and I'm not I'm not good in so many words using a flare I like it because it does capture some good stuff um, but I'm just I'm more old school I just I really like 
I really like a voice recorder and I really do like a K2 meter. I know it's just simple, but I guess maybe I'm a simple kind of person. Um, but I mean, I have used the FLIR. I have used, you know, SLS and stuff like that. But if I'm not knowledgeable enough in it to really be able to say, okay, yes, that's something and or no, that's not, then um, until I get into the point where again, knowledgeable in it. It's not one of my favorite tools to use. If you get a chance, look on Amazon and there's a little flare that you can put on the end of your phone. And it's actually really cool because it just connects to your phone yep. and you turn it around and it, it takes pictures for you. It records, it does anything you want it to. And it's just so compact and so cool. Yep. And see, and that's one of the things that me and my husband will, do want to get is that little flare that sits on the end of your phone. It's just, we just haven't had a chance to go on Amazon for it. So, yeah. Yeah. I need to go. <laughs> you know, oh, wait, she's still there. Yeah. We, lost, we, we lost connection briefly with you. What do you think about the K2? Yeah. Me personally, mm -hmm. um, I've, can y'all hear me? Okay. Am I good? Yeah. We can okay. now. Um, I, okay. I've actually gotten some of my best results and some of my best answer, I guess I know answer, um, answer sessions off of a K2. Um, we did an event for Flamiri down at the USS North Carolina in Wilmington. Um, this was before we, this was like, the last event before we became part of RTL in Flumeri. Um, and I was by myself in the bunker section where the sailors would sleep. And I, you know, and I literally had the K2 in front of my hand and I cannot, I want to say the guy's name was David. I was talking to, I don't, I think that's what it was, but I'm not, I can't remember. Um, but literally I was asking yes and no answer. I mean, yes, and no questions. And he was answering me, all the way up pegging all the way up to red for yes all the way up to red for yes and mm -hmm. nothing for no so i like the k2 a lot of people don't because it can give false readings if there's wi-fi in the building or if for some odd reason you forget to put your phone on airplane mode of course it's going to affect it um mm -hmm. but i mean i i like it i'm just old school you, you know i'm forcing using it as a brain and we'll put that on airplane mode or, you know, that they're knowledgeable enough to do that. But I have saved one, one yeah. person. Um, we did a, a residential and it kept going off in this one hallway. And I'm like, why? And this was just a base reading. I'm like, why is it? And it was all the way red. Come to find out his wiring wasn't touching right. And we saved him from a fire mm -hmm. just by that. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. I mean, some people are like, oh, K2 meters are crap, you know, and stuff like that. But I've had some of my best, during some of my best investigations, I've gotten really good, you know, readings off of it. So, you know, it's a give or take kind of thing. You know, everybody has their own favorite equipment that they like to use, you know. Um, yep. See, and like Jill said, the simpler tools seem to work well for most people to get answers. You know, it's just, I'm a simple kind of person. That's really literally the only thing I can say about it, you know, and the more, you know, obviously the, the better the equipment, the more, the more this is, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, but um, it's just, I mean, I like it. That's all I can say. Not no, I wanna, it right I to you. Know, there are a lot of people that like to um, complicate things by getting all kinds of equipment. And I admit, I've got a whole bunch of crap. Yeah, I me too. I got pretty much just about everything. Uh, but yeah. but we know an investigation. How much do we actually take? Hey, sorry. What? No, no, no. When we go on an investigation, how much of this crap that we spend a thousand dollars on do we actually take? I take a book bag, and that's it. Well, you we guys, go. I actually got it right next to me. I got a whole toolbox. And when I went on my, my trip here, I only took a book bag and a small bag with me because I didn't want to bring everything with me. 
I just watched the That was us going down to old. I don't know if y'all gonna be much you can take with you on an airplane. So I literally had my carry-on bag full of paranormal equipment. And I told TSA, I was like, look, I'm a paranormal investigator. Here's my card. I'm wearing the shirt. You know, just check it out. If you have any questions about whatever it is, I will be more than happy to tell you. And they were like, oh, no, you're fine. And just let me right on through. And I was like, all right, bet. We're good. <laughs> they must have had some before. <laughs> yep, exactly. So yes, was, there's been like several times I've been like, I always have worry about, you know, if I have to get on a plane somewhere for, and I'm thinking, how am I going to get my stuff on the plane nowadays? Cause it's so strict. So that makes me not wonder. Here carry it on. Way. You carry it on. You take the batteries out. Yep. Carry it on. Put them Do not check Don't it. carry them on. Don't check it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I drive everywhere. So I'm not yeah. going to Most of the time I'm usually. All right. usually so guys. Guys, I was trying to be do my due diligence and be on, but evidently my entire city is without power, so this is going to be a hot minute. So I've got to save my battery. So they just took All a right. ride, and literally my entire city is without power. Oh, jeez. So this is going to be a long haul, so I've got to conserve my battery. Okay. All right, well, you be safe out there. Be safe out there, Arlene. Yeah, this is what, okay. that's what it looks oh, like now. Yeah, wow, it's getting really yeah. nasty out there. Yeah. All right, so I love you. Sorry, Rachel. I really wanted to talk to you, but I know we're going to talk later. Let us know you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. Bye, later. guys. Bye. Now, uh, Jill had another question, which was, how about capturing any, any images what oh what what do you what all do you use to see anything when you're picking up things? Um, we actually um have caught some of our best evidence just taking photos, just taking the three shots quickly, just like this, you know, or taking you know, like I said, Nick Beckner, um, you know, who's part of Flumeri, um, he is our resident you know, photographer for a lot of our events, and he's captured a lot of amazing evidence that we never even saw and wouldn't seen unless he was taking the pictures. So I just, I, I'm a firm believer in just snapping photos, you know, doing those rapid, rapid shots because, you know, one photo is not going to show something, the next photo might not, and then the third photo, you're going to be like, what the hell is that? So that's what we, you know, that's what we use. I'm old school, man. I'm old. I'm old school. <laughs> That's I, I, I'm old school too. I got a lot of the old stuff as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, not me. I'm trying to get into the habit of taking pictures, but I am terrible at it. I'll be the first to admit. I I don't take that. I mean, I film it, but I don't really, you know, take pictures very often. I mean, I'll take like a few, like maybe from at the start of the investigation, but that's probably it. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I guess, I guess for me, I'm more into doing the experiences instead right. of taking pictures. Right, and that's something so hard to prove or even yep. debunk because you're like, okay, I don't know how many, uh, you, Rachel, sounds like you might be a little bit of an empath or a medium, but mm -hmm. it depends on how, how you hear, see, you know, whatever it is, if you're clairvoyant, you're clairaudient. Me, I, I don't know what it's called, but words just come to me that aren't in my brain to start with. So where'd they come from? It had to be, you know, something. And usually I'm right. But how do you explain oh that? Gosh. And how do you debunk, you know, or not, unless you didn't know any of the history when you walked in? And then you can't even prove you didn't know. So it's like, I like to have two cameras like in the same place so that you can see it from this angle, this angle. Yes. And then I take pictures. Always, a lot in the dark. Yep. Yeah. It's always good to have, you know, double of everything, double recorders, double K2 meters, double REM pods, you know, double, you know, um, you know, cameras to be able to debunk because that's the whole thing about it. You know, not everything is paranormal. Not everything. Not, not everything thing is you know a demon and you know you're i'm sorry to say this but you know you can't get possessed on every investigation you go on you know and 
Um, you know, not everything is something that's paranormal. So the whole point of, of figuring out exactly what's going on is you have to debunk. You have to be a skeptic, whether you whether you fully mm -hmm. believe or you don't believe at all. You have to have that skeptical side to you to have that good evidence and be able to be like, OK, I cannot explain this. It, you know, this is something that we're going to have to go back and look into. You know, mm -hmm. we most of our time, if we get any kind of photos, we send them off to get looked at by someone for professional so you know they can say you know it's uh it's going you know it, it it is something or it isn't something so you know it's just it's all about debunking and trying to figure out exactly whether it is something that you captured or it's just kind of right. it's nothing so that's one thing about you know flamarian about rtl we're always all of us have that little skeptic side to us you know, we love doing what we're doing, but we all know that everything is not paranormal. It cannot be. So I, I'm apparently way behind, but I've heard about Flu Mary. I know who they are. What is RTL? Um, RTL Paranormal is the group that Ray started, um, you know, back in 2009. It was him and two other people. Um, Tim, who is another team member, and Linda, who was in the team but um, had to leave years ago before we even started. It was just a paranormal group that they started to go do home investigations, businesses, stuff like that. And then it just kind of grew into more and more, you know, members and everything like that. So that's what RTL is. Okay. Okay. I thought there was something huge I missed somewhere because I knew Blue Mary but I had no idea what that was. What? No, ma'am. Are you in a phone vibrating or? I don't know, but Nick, what happened to your background? You're blurry. You're all kinds of weird right now. Oh man. I was so frustrated because I kept going in and out, like disappearing and stuff like that. And I was trying to use like, <laughs> again, I was using a lamp at this point to try to, you know, get me back into the picture. And I turn it off, and all of a sudden, it's like things are fine now. So yeah, it's good. What well, <clears throat> what about that green screen you used to have? I still have it, but that's upstairs though. So that's again, that's why I was having malfunctions because I'm not upstairs in my room slash office. So that also means I don't have the green screen. So that's upstairs. I'm down here. Are you able to bring it downstairs? Yeah, I'm able to bring it down, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a big green screen. I would have to go all the way upstairs and bring it all the way back down. No, you're good. That's, that's, we see <laughs> that's you. what I mean. We're good. Until he loses his video and then all of a sudden there's a picture of my face on there. <laughs> <laughs> that's just um, when he gets up because he probably in reality is really not wearing pants. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Jill, <laughs> like, what, what happened to the dolls earlier behind you? <laughs> that, that's from a previous screen he had. <laughs> he can even put yeah, gummy it, bears you don't, behind you. If you don't know Nick and his background, he's probably the, he's probably the man of a thousand backgrounds. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of, you know, I'm going to just try one more. And guess what? You had to say it, Adrian. I was going to use gummy bears. There we go. <laughs> What's up? He's, he's got a background for every occasion. <laughs> no, I want gummy bears. <laughs> I'll pass on the gummy bears. Yeah, Rachel. I'll, you know, no, I'll pass on the gummy, gummy bears. bears. <laughs> They're so good. They turn you into a child and you play with them. Yeah. You know. The strawberry flavor is the best. <laughs> 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 you know, up until a week ago, I had no idea the green was strawberry. I thought it was lime. I, no I did too. I thought it was apple. Years. Oh boy! It depends on what it depends on what brand you get. They all are different. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I seen those gummy bears. Nope, I'll pass. Well, we're talking about different gummy bears. These are the ones you buy in the store. The ones I have are the ones you buy in Colorado. Those are different. Yeah. I know those are the ones that I've seen. <laughs> those are the 
Those are the good. extra special ones. <laughs> yeah. With extra flavor. Yep, exactly. That's really going to make you see those bears going across the ceiling. <laughs> so. Right. <laughs> anything you want. Yeah. You know what, Nick? If you were able to and able to superimpose it onto your screen, get like a line of gummy bears just bouncing up and down, going across right across the bottom of the screen right here. I don't know. If you ate one of the ones that I can eat, you wouldn't have to have that. You you could just see it. It's okay. Yeah, that 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 would be cool. Um, you know, what what, up, like, what upcoming events does Flamiri have? Um, well, May twenty eighth. Um, it's not a flu. Well, it is a Flamiri event, but we have a an event at the Beacon Theater in Hopewell, Virginia, with RTL, and Ray is our featured guest. And then June fourth, we have the Bell Mansion in Fort Wayne, Indiana, with uh, that's Chelsea. that's my town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, go to there, that's my town. Go. Be there, be yep. square. Be Did you say June 4th? June 4th, yes, sir. Yep. And uh, with Chelsea Gill, Kristen Lumen, and Maria Verdeshi. Um, the tickets are $40 to $120, depending on what package you want to buy. There are just like general admission and meet and greet. And then you can actually go all the way up to VIP tickets where you'll have a, a room available there. Um, June 11th, like okay. I was talking earlier, we do have the event in Rock Island um, at the Rock Island YMCA with Kristen um, Lumen, Maria Verdeshi, Melody Knapp, and Madis- Madison Smith. Those tickets are $50. Then we have the June 25th event um, that is hosted by um, Paranormal Explorations of America, which Shannon Rogers and, um, oh God. Shannon's amazing. Is it Tiffany? Oh, Shannon's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I love Shannon's girl. Um, but she'll um she'll be there just as Ray, but Shannon Rogers, Todd and Leanne, SQ, Beth Allen, yeah. Eileen, and Tiffany Chestnut are gonna be there as well as Connie, um Connie and Dan. And it's a fundraiser event um to help Connie and Dan uh make up some of their lost profits from over the winter storms they had that where they had to fix the plumbing and electrical. Um those tickets have a range of prices. If you want to get those tickets, you just look up here, Normal Explorations of America. It is almost sold out. Uh, from what I heard last, there was only like one room left um, because it's a very small event. So there's not going to be a bunch of uh, people there. So it's, you should have some very good activity and, and everything like, uh, you know, and stuff like, you know, and everything like that, stuff like that. And then October 22nd, um, the old Southern funeral home in Atala jail in, okay, I'm probably going to completely murder this name, but is it Cuscusco, Mississippi? Casiasco. Yeah, there, there we go. Thank you. I make yeah, that it all the time. There. Yeah. The <laughs> only reason I know that is because the next county over is Casiasco County. And that's where, um, the old Casiasco County jail is at. That's also okay. supposed to be really haunted. So that's the only reason how I know how to pronounce that name. <laughs> how you know how to say it. Yeah, because I was like, I am so going to murder that name completely yeah. when I try to say it. Um, but yeah, at the old Southern Funeral. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> we're we're kind of um, losing you again, Rachel. Rachel. Yeah, um, there we go. Are you losing me again? Yep. No, you're, no, you're, no, you're back. back. You're back. Okay, good. Um, but no, the yeah. old Southern Funeral Home in Atala Jail um, with Ray and Shannon and Beth and I, Beth Allen and Eileen. Um, you know, if you want to look for tickets for that, again, go to Paranormal Explorations of America. And then our two-day event at Old Hospital on College Hill in Williamson, West Virginia with Daryl Marston, Mustafa Gadalari, Kristen Lumen, and Chelsea Gill. If you don't go to any other, and I know Ray's probably going to kill me for saying this, but this place is, I guess maybe it's just because of all the activity we got. This place is absolutely amazing. You have to go there, even if it's not with Flumeri. Sorry, Ray. Even if it's not with us, this place (laughs) is 
absolutely amazing. It is, it should be one of your, you know, it'll be on one of your, you know, your top three to top five of the places that you would love to, would love to go to and investigate. Cause it's, it's so unassuming, but this, the, just the stuff that we got there, it was, it's on like every paranormal investigators bucket list to, to see the stuff and to get the EVPs that we got um, in the, in, in that. If y'all hear a ball rolling, my cat's we're losing you again. We're losing you again. Oh, now we're good. Can you hear me now? Yep, yeah, you're okay. good now. Yep. You're good. Okay, good. It, it just it just comes in in spurts every now and then that you start looking like that eighties, um, that eighties guy. You know who I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Damn. I can't remember who that is either. But That's I know what funny it. because my cat decided to kill one of those damn doves in front of my porch this morning. <sighs> Not funny. Not cool. Mm -mm. Yeah. But Maybe June fourth, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to the Bell Mansion because I'm scheduled to do something else that day. I can't remember right. what. Which day was it? But I got something going on on June fourth. Oh, June fourth. Yeah, and and I have been to the Bell Mansion. Oh, yeah. Nick and Angie have given me a personal tour there before they opened it up for the public, and it is gorgeous inside there. Um, the the work that went into that place when they when when it was first built the the craftsmanship in the wood that they did is just amazing you don't see that anymore mm -hmm. it's I, I would have to say that that's the kind I'm of work that they put in that woodwork is a lost art now yes that's what i've heard i've heard that place is absolutely gorgeous it and, is um, <clears throat> it is i i got I to see all, all the rooms of these yeah, I got to see all the rooms in that building. It is just amazing. Yeah. But yeah, but any of our Guys, events, right if back. you want, you know, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm any sorry, of our events. <laughs> I, I, I have, I, I've got to change that on the account. It used to be the 13th Dimension logo on there, my Friday night show, that Nick is also becoming a brand new co-host on it. Um. That's right. <laughs> but then I ended up changing it to my face because at the time I was doing shows and I wasn't showing my face on camera. So I put that on there and I really need to change that back. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel better, I took it off. I just decided to put the camera on. I'll still be back, though. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <now. laughs> but yeah, but you know, if anybody wants to look up, you know, if, you know, look up our upcoming events. They can go to flumerypromotions.com. We have a whole website up yeah. that has all of our events um, that are coming up. And then anybody who wants to follow RTL Paranormal or Flumeri Promotions, we are on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. I think that's all three of them, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. So. Okay, so you guys are trying to cover as much of the basis, mm -hmm. um, many platforms. Yep, that's exactly. always a good idea. That's what that's what we're doing as well. Because um, not only are we streaming on their Facebook, but we're also covering YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. Um, we're also signed up on LinkedIn and TikTok, but we're just waiting to gain the followers to be able to go live there. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's weird how you have to turn out the followers are, to be able to go live. And in all the locate all the events that you do have come, I mean, it seems like I've got something going on every one of them. Because the June twenty fifth, I'll just at that time I'll just be returning from an investigation in New York at Wildwood. Um, that's the one oh, that nice. Nick and I are doing. Wildwood Sanitarium. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. Have you been there? No, <laughs> I want I want to go there. If you get the opportunity, don't miss out on it. I've been there twice already. It's it's an amazing place. Um, it is a small town, mm -hmm. but it they make it count. Let's put it that way. Gotcha. Because um, gotcha. not only do they have that sanitarium, um, 
but the doctor who is said to reside there at the sanitarium is also buried at the cemetery not even a mile away um and there's reports of stuff going on there at that cemetery too i'm sure yeah I'm so sure it's probably, if you get a yeah, probably, probably is, yeah, in places. right yeah so if you get the opportunity to go to wildwood definitely take it okay and definitely. um i think don't hold me to this, but I think you would be able to to sleep there too. Mm. Yeah, you're 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 because, speaking you're speaking to my heart, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time I was there, I I got to sleep there, um, okay. and I got to sleep on the third floor in the the very front room. Uh, a lot of people don't like sleeping there because there's apparently a lot of activity up there and i was like hell i'll go up there yeah um but the second time that i went there i did not i had the opportunity to sleep there but i did not you know because there was going to be a big group of people and like you know what i think this time i'll go i'll get a hotel yeah guys i i'm, I'm the kind of guy i like to have my own privacy too oh yeah of course um but I don't know if they offer that on all the investigations, but I do know sometimes you can sleep there. Okay. Um, now, Transallegheny, <clears throat> tell, tell me about your experiences there. That, that it, that's like a really, really large location, isn't it? Oh yeah, that place is huge. It's like a mile and a half long. Just the just the um, main building, Ooh. and then we also got the other buildings where they held the site patients, the tuberculosis patients. They had the morgue on site. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they also have a crematorium in the same building as the morgue. But um, when we went there, it was. <laughs> And I hate to put it this way, but it was disappointing because we didn't get a lot of activity. It was really weird because it's been on my bucket list for years. And I was, you know, I was excited and I'm still, I mean, I'm still excited because I'm definitely going to go back, but um, we I just did well. not get a lot of activity. <laughs> Sleep, slept very well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I do know that there have been some places that I've been to that I've looked forward to going to and have been let down just like you. Um, mm -hmm. But at, at the same time, I, I take into account, well, you know, I'm just going there for one night or two exactly. nights or whatever the case may be. You know, yeah. I might be there on an off night. I could come back the second time and the place is just jumping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's just like, you know, when we have our events, you know, I'm I'm famous for telling our guests, they're not puppets. They're not going to do anything on command for you. They're going to they're going to communicate with you if they want to. If there's a negative right. energy in the air and there's a negative person there, they're going to be like, forget you, buddy, or forget you, sister. I'm not going to communicate with you because I don't like your energy. Um, But, you know, it's just. It's weird because um, I'm all about when I when I lead a group or when we have any of our investigations, I'm always telling people the more energy you put out, the more energy you're going to get back. It's just like what you put onto the universe is going to come back to you tenfold. Mm -hmm. You know, so the more energy you put out, the more energy is going to give them to be able to communicate with us. But then again, they're not going to do it on command. There, you know, and also at the same time, you'd have to be respectful because these were people just like us. They may not be living anymore, but they're still people that used to live. So you have to have the utmost respect for them, just like you would for your own grandma, nana, grandpa, sister, brother, mother, father, whatever. Right. So, right. Yeah. But otherwise, it's going to be like you're, you're getting ghost blocked. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's. That's what you hear me right there. You're going to get ghost blocked. Almost like another kind of block. I'm not going to put that word out there, but you know what I'm saying. That, that was what I was thinking. <laughs> I thought, uh, I'm going to put the word ghost 
in there instead. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's pretty much the exactly. same thing. Great minds think yeah. alike, I'm telling you. Now, Jill made a good point saying, I'm wondering if sometimes they're running away, hiding, just watching if there's a lot of new people to them. And they do. You know, we have yeah. a lot of, um, we, we do have our own places that we go to and investigate a lot. And we get a lot of activity there because they're used to us. But then we go to other places that are brand new that we've never been to. And it's nothing. Like we did a private investigation in um, Walton, Kentucky. A couple weeks back, we went to Benton Farm into Gaines Tavern. Um, and at Benton, Benton Farm, we we got some stuff. You know, we had a, a, a halfway decent SD session, some rim pod play, some cat balls, had heard some walking, some voices. But then when we were listening back to the EVPs, we actually had a full-blown conversation between two people inside the house when you can clearly hear us outside the house and then you hear a little child scream we we don't understand exactly we don't know if it's saying i want that almost like take like talking about some of our equipment or saying um please stop up that and then crying like hu, 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 afterwards we were like whoa no one was in the house we were all leaving to go get our hotel rooms and go out to dinner but then at Gaines tavern it was completely like we didn't get anything at all it was the weirdest it was the weirdest thing ever so it just all depends you know sometimes if they don't know you they're gonna hide especially if there's children involved or you know somebody that isn't used to you you, they're going to go hide and kind of watch from the from the sidelines um, to kind of gauge who you are, just like we do as humans. We gauge people to really get the energy off of them and to be able to kind of gauge who they are, who we're feeling as they are as a person. Mm-hmm. So that's right. what, I mean, that's what I that's just me. That's what I believe. Not every you know, not everybody feels the same way I do, but that's what I that's what I truly believe. That's why I'm always <laughs> saying. Just treat them with respect. That's all I ask. If it was me and I and I had, if I had an asshole coming in and trying to check out my location that I'm haunting, I'm going to yep. screw with him. Oh yeah. <laughs> no advantage about it. He, he said, "Hey, what what is your name? Bowling shoes." You know. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Exactly. You want activity? I'll give you activity. It may not be what you want. I'm going to give yeah, you something. I'm going to give you some activity, or go and go woo-hoo, somewhere where it doesn't. It's not supposed to belong. Oh yeah, I'd be all about it all, all day long. I'm not even going to lie. I would because I I don't like people. I'm not a mean person by any means. I'm the most cool, calm, collected person in the whole entire world. Not much phases me, but. If when you get me to this point right here, and I'm six foot two, so when you pass six foot two, it's it's going to be your tail, and you are in my crosshairs. So that's my height too. So I'm in the same. I know exactly what you mean by that, Rachel. Yeah, I am. Damn, like I, 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 I am. Like, yeah, you know, it, it is funny because my my dad was six five, my mom's five three and a half. Go figure. I come somewhere like in the middle. Who knows? Oh wow! It's just the way it was, the way that, the way you know it all worked out, I guess. So that, that's a that's a big height difference. Yeah. It is. Everybody used to call them. Um, oh God, Mutt Mutt and Jeff, Mutt and Jeff back in the day. Is it Mutt and Jeff? Okay, yeah. I see Adrian was shaking her head. Yep. That's what they used to call them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says, I have. I have two boys who, well, my oldest will be 19 in September. My youngest will be 18 in November. And they're both taller than me. My oldest is about 6'6", six, six, and my youngest is almost 6'7". So, oh, wow. you know, oh, God. yeah, never in a million years did I think I'd be going like this looking at them. But here I am. <laughs> so, well, how tall is your husband? Um, my Well, they're from a previous marriage, but he is right at 6'4". And my husband I have now is he's 6'2". So, I mean... But, you know, everybody on my dad's side of the family is nobody's under six foot and uh, nobody and everybody on my mom's side of the family, nobody's over five, nine. So they got just got the height 
they got the height. But yeah, one's a bean pole, and then the other one's built like a linebacker for you know the Chicago Bears. I'm just throwing, I'm just throwing a name out. <laughs> that, that well, I live yeah. in Chicago, so I get pictures. Yeah, that. So there you go. Yep. Yeah, I mean, like you know, you know, my oldest, he's just you know, he's big and stocky, and while and then my poor, my poor younger son, he's unfortunately built like me, but he's like lead. You try to move him, and it's like you can't, you know. So, but. So are, are your sons into the paranormal as well? Are, um, are they interested in it? Actually, um, our oldest son um, has been on one, two, three, four, five different investigations with us, and he absolutely loves it. Um, our younger son, he's, as I call him, he's the social butterfly, so he's never around. <laughs> he's the one who's always hanging out with his friends and stuff, but they're both very into it. Um, my youngest son, uh, Cor my oldest boy is Cody. My youngest son is Corey. Um, but Corey, when I, I posted out that I was going to be on here tonight, he, he posted on Facebook. He's like, Oh, finna be famous. You know? And I was like, Oh, thanks kid. I appreciate you. <laughs> so, but yeah, he's interested in it, but he's just, he's always hanging out with his friends and stuff. But our older son, Cody, he's really into it. And, um, he just kind of, he's one of those ones that just kind of sits back and observes. He doesn't say much, but when we capture something, he's like a kid at Christmas. He's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. He's like, oh, that's the coolest thing ever, you know? So it it, it definitely is, um, it's interesting to say the least, but, you know, I'm glad that, you know, they're both into it and they're both, they're both very supportive in, you know, what me and my husband do. And, um, I really hope that, you know, later on down the road that, you know, possibly we can kind of make it a, almost like a family affair in so many words, because I think the energy that we have when we go into an investigation, especially if it's a location that has a lot of family history to it, I think we would get more evidence out of having that family unit together. That's That'd funny. Like awesome. my, my grandson. Oh, yeah. 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 My grandson is 10, almost 11. And we took him on his first investigation when he was eight. I took his mom with, with us. I knew it was a benign location. I knew there was probably nothing there. If it was, it was very either residual or just benign. But he would watch the cameras and he'd watch us, watch the cameras. And we left it at that. He called me last night and he was like, Grandma, my friend downloaded this app. It was a ghost app. I said, what ghost app did he download? Oh, he said, it was, uh, there was three of them. One was a Ouija board. I said, what? there's no Ouija board one? Yes. I said, son, that's not how that works. You need to stop that. And you need to delete it. <laughs> and he goes, well, we got these words. And he started showing me. And I said, really? Did that make any sense to you? He goes, no. I said, all right, then delete that app. Now, what's the other one? <laughs> He told me something silly I'd never heard of. And I said, what'd you get out of that? And he said, it said bridge and all kinds of like 25 words. I said, did any of that make sense? He goes, no. I said, delete it. Was that that ghost radar app? No, thank good. No. Oh, thank goodness too. Because at 11 years old, they're going to think there's ghosts everywhere. Yep. And mm -hmm. that's so scared of, which he yep. already thinks he sees, which is really weird. He used to, as, I think he was three. He said, Vaga's right there. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? He said, Vaga. And when he get in trouble, Vaga did it. She took my toy. What are you talking about? We looked up that name. You ever look up that name? It's a little scary. What name and is it? Vaga. Vaga. Yeah. That's weird. That's a, a really weird name. I when will have to admit that almost sounds what like. It is. The only thing I'm just going to say about that sounds almost more like a name for a rapper. <laughs> I wish it was. I, I really wish it was. Uh, but at three years old, he used to say this. And we thought, you know, he was hard of hearing because um, he had fluid in his ears. And until he got that drained at four years old, he was calling me Bama. Because it, that's what he heard. He heard like he was yep. underwater. So mm. I'm like, you know, I didn't pay much no. attention to it. Well, when he got old enough, he is drawing these figures and i mean these things are just awful looking they're, they're dark i mean it's terrible and 
his mom says he sees this stuff and he's he's scared. He won't even come out of his room at night. And I'm like, that's really strange. Well, they just had a house fire. So oh. I'm like, you know, you, you got to get him some counseling. You, you need to, you know, he's, he's traumatized. So he's telling me about all this and his friend's sitting next to him. And this other app, it's like a yes or no app. It's kind of like the eight ball thing that we Oh, have. yeah, one of those. Yeah. It, it was like that. Okay. And I said, delete every one of those right now. <laughs> and he was like, but I didn't want to play it to you. You were here on video with me. And I said, don't play it at all. I said, go get a string and go get anything else. I don't care what. Put a rock on the end of that thing. I said, make a pendulum. What does that do? I said, let's just do it. He did that while I was on video. I said, ask it yes and ask it no. And he did. One went this way, one went this way. And I was like, okay, there's your yes, there's your no. Communicate that way. I said, I don't want to see another app on your phone with this crap. Let's start there. See, that's what Michael does on our team. He he uses the pendulums and does yes no's with that. Yeah, see, I, I love somebody who can use it. I, I I respect the hell out of them. I can't because I don't trust myself. Because I think while I'm holding it, because I want the answer to be yes so bad that I think I'm actually without thinking moving it. So I, I don't trust that at all until I put it like on a hanger. We did that one investigation. We put it on a little hanger and some sand underneath it where it would touch and we'd go away and no no wind no nothing and you'd know if it moved that's actually kind of what kind of a setup that they have at wildwood uh yeah. they, they have this circular thing that's filled with sand and the, the pendulum is down there is hanging off of the whatever it is and it makes designs in there and the last time that I was there, the the leader of the group that I was with, his brother had passed away just a month before. And it seemed like he was sending messages through that pendulum in the sand and drawing things that only he would have said. If it helped him, that's awesome. That's what matters. It was yeah. with him. Jeremy, I mean, you brought that up. I mean, I don't considering that we you know we're going to be heading there unless you know about a month from now i don't even know if tom knows about that so it might be something we may want to point out to him about because i don't think he knows oh yeah i'll definitely point it out i i know some of the the hot spots in that building so i'll definitely let you guys know yeah because like obviously as you know it's gonna be both mine and tom's first time ever going there yeah there's so many different it's things an awesome to place. Try. In the sand is that agent? There's so many different things to try and so many different ideas that other people have. And you can't just try it once and throw it away. You have to try it a few times. And then, you know, if you don't like it, it doesn't work for you, then throw it away. Yep. Move on to something different. But yeah. if we stay in the same stuff, stuck in our same mindset, we're never going to learn anything. Exactly. You know? Well, hell, I, I've been I've been working with the dog whistle for two years yeah, now. The dog whistle, the dog you know whistle. Works that is great. taking off because I've had people ask me about that. <laughs> really? And I don't say nothing that is not my idea. That is not my place to say. I'll say, go ask Jeremy. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rachel, if you got any questions about the dog whistle, just just go to Jeremy. <laughs> I, I still I can't believe it's taking off the way that it has. Uh, oh, she doesn't know. Jeremy, explain. Okay. Well, so, so the original thought process behind the dog whistle was to use it as a way of communicating uh, during an EVP session. Turns out that is not the result that we get. Um, okay. One or two things always happens. One, they will either flee the area because they don't like the sound of it, or two, it will piss them off and they will get aggressive. Really? When and, they and flee I, the area, they will knock you down some stairs if you're standing there. Mm-hmm. That that happened to or that almost okay. happened to one of my teammates. She just happened to be walking up the stairs. And I was in the basement. 
Um, her husband was right at the bottom of the stairs. He wasn't getting ready to go up yet, but she was up there and I blew the whistle. And she said it felt like that there was a herd of people rushing right by her and pushed her into the wall. Um, like they were trying to escape. Wow, that's crazy. We did that in uh, Waverly, too, down at the death tunnel. Yep. Oh, man. That, oh, my that God. Was something that, else. that was a that huge terror. experiment. And I, I thought that was a successful one. Uh, so what we did is we took all the rim pods and music boxes, everything with a sensor, and placed it in various spots throughout the tunnel. And I had people in in twos spread throughout the tunnel as well. One either on the ramp or one on and one on the stairs. And <clears throat> they all had rim pods near them. And I stood right in the center of the tunnel and I blew that whistle three or four times. And every time something went off. And the very last one, I think it was the very last one, the REM pod at the very top of that tunnel was going crazy. Like something went through to get out of there. It was the next to the last one. Yeah. Next to the last one? It, it it was weird. I know Adrian was there. Nick, I think you were in the tunnel as well. Yeah, was. Um, Don, Don was there. Don, Don was, was in there. there. Don yeah, was, there. was there. Yeah, it, it was really interesting to do, and I was hoping to follow up on that this year. Um, but with what's going on with Waverly, yeah, with Waverly, yeah. So I'm gonna wait until we're able to get back in there because I want to follow up on that experiment. Yeah, that is something I want to experience again. Yeah. When Tina and Charlie yeah, and have Waverly, Waverly back, we'll talk about it. Yep. Exactly. And see, and Waverly has been on my bucket list for years. And we were supposed to have an event there, and then everything transpired that has happened now. And I won't step foot in that place until Tina and Charlie are back in there. Yeah, right. I I'll, I'll tell you this: Waverly way. is an amazing place to go to. Oh my God! It's and no matter how big you think it is, it's bigger than oh that. Oh my God! It, it's yeah. I mean, this thing is like. <laughs> I yeah. remember first time it's I not, got, I was there. Yeah, I was. It was a lot bigger than what I saw. But at the same time, it's not mile and a half long like um, Trans Allegheny is, but it is still a massive structure. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. But at the same time, it's really not, not because you get on a floor, like the nurse's wing up there in the front, you can actually picture yourself like being a patient or a nurse on that floor. Yep. And and you go into a room, it's like, okay, this was my room. And, you know, I don't know if it's you just trying to picture back then or if it's like something, you know, tries to show you. But then it's like, tries to show you. That's so good. This is my little area. It's not so big. It, it yeah, was really, really cool. But I, I do have to give this disclaimer since uh, Jeremy didn't. Do not use that damn dog whistle outside. Just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Somebody cry. Okay. Don't do it. So story <laughs> behind that. Right? Someone um, else coming at you. They're going to start coming at you. So. <laughs> Yeah, so the story behind that is one of the teams that, that's in the Thames family, um, Shadow Seekers. Yes, I'm calling them out. <laughs> but they're also <laughs> some of my best friends, too. Yeah. In fact, Chrissy was actually in the audience earlier tonight. Um, yeah, she was. So Amanda, um, who's one of my best friends, she messaged me saying, Hey, um, I, I, tried, I tried your dog whistle cool. last night. Okay, cool. Where, where were you at? We were at a cemetery. Um, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I found that out. We ended up getting chased out of there by coyotes. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and now, I do, and that, that was a disclaimer. You understand? Yeah, that was almost like... two years ago, and <laughs> I never thought that I would have to tell people do not use a whistle outside. Because I thought that was common sense. <laughs> well, so is do not drink the shampoo. Not the shampoo, but it's there. Right. What's like? Yeah. 
<laughs> but but the dog whistle is something that I have been experimenting and still am experimenting with um, for the last couple of years. I've got uh, you and I research out of Albany, New York. They been doing a lot of data collecting on that one and they come up with some really interesting things so we're waiting to take the experiment to the next level hey i wonder um, if bears are scared of it or if they'll come to it i'm not willing to try it that's off yeah, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. And what's really cool, um, oh, Eileen messaged me the next morning to let me know that Mustafa had tried it at the at the temple when when Flu Mary had its event over there. Um, huh. and and he was testing it out. <laughs> I thought that it was cool as hell. Yeah. Yeah. He did. I can't remember cool. what he said about it. it. Yeah, I, Mustafa will try anything new that anybody, if you say, hey, try throwing this bologna with mustard up against the wall and see <laughs> if what happens, he will try it at least once. And that's why I, me personally, and I'm sure pretty much everybody else out there, I can't speak for everybody, but me, I am so excited to be because from what he is told me, uh, you're what he up told again. me they got yeah. some of the best evidence I've ever had. Am I? Ah, oh, yes. There yeah. you hear me now? Back. Yeah, you're back now. So can you say that again? One, one thing I will say, Rachel, is and what I'll tell people, even though I haven't really started saying don't use it outside, but I have always said from the beginning, never use it on a residential. Yeah. Yeah, because you can potentially make it worse for the client. Right. Yeah, that's, you don't want to try something on a residential. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not a good yeah. idea. No, but I no, do no, want to say, want to try anything. You just want to stick to what you know, so it doesn't make it worse for them because you're there to help them. So yes. Right. Yeah. Now places like Waverly, the Temple. Transallergeny, Madison Seminary, places like that, perfect places to try fun. out yeah. experiments. You just don't want to do them at the residentials. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do have to say, Mustafa has got to be one of the nicest people. Oh, he is great. He's awesome. Somebody who, it doesn't matter, somebody who's been on TV, somebody who hasn't. He is one of the nicest people. And if you were to meet him without any knowledge of who he was, which I did, I had no knowledge of who he was when I met him. I was appointed to meet him as soon as he came in. I was appointed to make sure he's comfortable because he was the celebrity. Right. I had no idea. I, I had uh -huh. no idea who he was. To me, he was a person. That was it. I would have done the same yeah. for anyone that walked in. It didn't matter. He was so yeah, nice. Mustafa, I mean, he was uh, also very. He was yeah. also funny too. I mean, you just he had was. fun with him. Oh, Mustafa is one of the nicest, but he is one of the funniest guys you will ever meet in your whole entire life, and that's why I love investigating with him because our energy, like I, they, well, I don't know. I don't know if my group call myself the Mustafa group because I just like to have fun. I just like to have that good, positive energy going, blowing out, making the jokes, making everybody feel, you know, safe and comfortable and have a good time. But when we get together, you'll see us do nothing but laugh with each other and just and sing song lyrics and just like dance around like we're two little kids. And then when we get evidence together, we're both like we are like two kids at Christmas. It is the best thing ever. Mustafa I mean, Mustafa and Daryl and Kristen and Chelsea and Maria and um, I haven't had the chance to meet Melody yet, but Daniel, who are all of our talent, they are just all down to earth people that none of them have big swelled up celebrity heads. They're just they they love what they do. And that's I think that's why they everybody has so much um yes. fun and a good time and leaves our events so happy and keep coming back back 
because we just have a good time and we we like to teach and we like to have people learn and we love people that's ne- that have never investigated before because we get to kind of teach them the ropes okay and tell them okay well if you're really going to get interested start off with this and this is what this piece of equipment does and this is what how we do it but if you find another way you know you do it your way but this is ultimately your investigation you paid the money to come here we want you to let us know what you want to do so we can try to help you out have the, the best experience that you can so it's just i love it. like i am just i'll be Great job breaking up. Yep. <clears throat> and now you're frozen. Now. Eileen said she has power now. Why aren't Did you? you yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, you're back. You're Here we back. go. And, and Jill, um, I don't know what now, wouldn't you say that the whistle is a trigger object? But it's not necessarily just a call either. Um, I actually consider it a piece of equipment that I use. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a trigger object, but I consider it. I consider it equipment. Experimental, maybe. Experimental, yeah, that would be the best way to put it. Yeah, oh, Mustafa tried it. I knew that, but I didn't hear the verdict on on what happened when he oh, did. Oh, here's why. Here's the reason what Eileen reason why she doesn't show. Oh, up. no internet, just no power. internet, just power. Yeah. At least you'll be cool. Yeah, experimental, experimental tools. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard the result of what happened when Mustafa did use the whistle because Eileen was there and and she was giving him the whistle as just a joke. And now we're losing we Rachel. Lost Rachel. Yeah, but but she was giving it to him as just a joke. She didn't say anything about you know use this tonight or even brought my name up. He he took the whistle and next thing she knew was that he was telling everybody something about the experiment and even brought my name up, which I thought was cool as hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know about that. Yeah, and. Well, I have more than just Eileen messaging me about that the next day. Wow. Um, oh, oh, wait. wait and yeah, we wait. got uh, two Rachels. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, okay. I don't know what that was, but there were two of you for a second there, Rachel. Yeah. Hopefully there's only so, one now. Yeah. I don't want to know who the other Rachel was. <laughs> okay, so before we go, I... There's new people on here tonight, some I haven't seen before. Jill. Yeah, Jill. Where are you from? What team are you from? I have seen Jill's name before on other shows, but I can't remember which ones. Yeah. I haven't, so I'm I'm curious. I, I like meeting people, so I, I got to <laughs> see. I, obviously, she just messed. You know, she obviously commented, so she's she should yeah. still be on. Hopefully, um, I'm actually Pat is another so. new name, but I think Pat is. Yeah, Pat. I think that's who it is. One of your friends, Rachel. Yes. Oh, uh, she said she's from Fresno, sent over from Minnesota. If I'm correct, Fresno. That's that's why I know yeah. Jill. Okay. Okay. Is that Minnesota or Mountain Ghost Box? I can't tell. Mi- Minnesota oh, Ghost Box. Oh, she's, she's with Greg. Okay. Oh, okay. I think, oh, I think she's right. on Greg's okay. team. All right. Oh, Tell she's Greg the upper, upper, right. Love him. He's been watching Greg's shows. Yeah, that's where I know Jill's name. I knew I'd seen her name several times. Okay. But we have so many shows, I can't keep them all still. Yeah. Greg's amazing. We love him. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. In fact, Greg was another guy who messaged yeah. me that yeah. next day to let me know about Mustafa. Uh, I only just wrote this. Yeah, no, Pat is one of my, um, Pat is one of um, RTL's members. She's my best friend, literally. Never okay. thought I'd f- find my best friend in, the, in doing paranormal investigating, but here I am. So she's my sister wife. <laughs> she said she's kind of new here. <laughs> well, welcome, Jade, and thank welcome. you for watching. That's okay. It won't take you long. Hang with us and you'll know everybody. <laughs> Not the way you want yeah. to, but you will know everybody. <clears throat> 
<laughs> and, and in fact, Joe, um, tomorrow night, uh, Nick and I are relaunching the 13th Dimension. So stay tuned for that. That one is going to be an exciting show. Oh, yeah, I'm excited for uh, this one. I have been wanting to interview these two ladies for so long and finally going to get the opportunity. Who is it? Anne and yeah, Renata, Renata from Fightfully Good, good. From Australia. They're yeah. awesome. They're sweet ladies. Mm -hmm. oh, Jill said she'll be there. Awesome. Um, same time as this show, 8, eight to 10 Eastern. I should probably tell Jill about my other show. And uh, Jill, in case you're interested, believe it or not, I actually have a show of my own that I do on Wednesday evenings uh, on around 5 o'clock Central. That way, California is uh, – that's two hours behind, right? Yes, two okay, hours so behind be, you. Yeah, so 5 o'clock here would be 3 o'clock your time. My show is called uh, Paranormal and Historic Locations and Legends. And my show, I don't really interview guests. I present presentations of historic and haunted locations, practically an education show, if you will. If you'll just get on things, we got a whole list of shows. Yep. Pick which ones you like and watch. <laughs> we got a lot of them. Yeah. Yes. We got about got 20, them. I think, now. Yep. So, got our um, so, so before we wrap this up, um, Rachel, where can people find you? Find me personally. Yeah. <laughs> you, your team, all of them. Um, I, yeah. Um, yeah, I my main thing is Facebook. You can look me up through Facebook. Um, I do have a TikTok, but I don't have my name put onto it. I haven't posted any videos or anything like that. Um, but you can find me a lot um, posting for RTL and Flu Mary. So if you look up RTL Paranormal and Flu Mary Promotions LLC. Um, you can find me on both of those. I do a lot of the lives when we do our um, private and our public ghost hunts. Um, because like I said, I love to talk. So for some reason, I am kind of like the face in so many words. I mean, I hate to put it that way. I'm not trying to toot, toot my own horn. But I'm just, I'm just a talker. I talk all day long for my job and then talk all night long at investigations. So... But yeah, Facebook, just look up Rachel Bradley and it's me. Um, you'll see me looking sideways like I'm all stoic and stuff. And then you'll see me in the investigation mode as my cover photo. Awesome. And I don't know who we have as a guest uh, next well, week. I know. think Eileen has somebody lined up. Yeah, I'm not, I was going to ask you guys yeah. about that. Well, Rachel, um, it's definitely been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for oh, being thank with you us so tonight. Much for having me. Thank you. I've had a great time. This has been awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, you know, hopefully maybe later on down the road, I can come back and we can chat some more because this is my favorite thing to talk well, about. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. We'll definitely have you back on. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, maybe next time my internet, it's a little cloudy and rainy here, so maybe next time my internet won't go in and out as much. So If right. it's not yours, it's going to be one of ours. It happens. There's, there's yeah. things that perfect. Yeah, I'm notorious for that. I, I, You've seen my issues I had earlier today. Maybe, yeah. maybe not the next, but yeah. you've seen the issues I had with the camera. <laughs> well, it is, we'd be on TV. Yep, and it is also Mercury retrograde right now, so everything's all haywire. <laughs> <laughs> and for everybody out there in the audience, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight um, yes, and presenting your questions. And so stay tuned for next week when we have our next guest. I don't know who it is. Eileen's. He, I mean, hello. <laughs> I get it. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I didn't. I didn't even want to get any of that. I, Eileen is Eileen is booking our guest for for this show, so she's the one who's who's got that list. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she um, has. Oh, we'll have yes. to, we'll have the, right. She would have told. Well, so that. until until next time, um, thank you all for watching. Have a good night. Thanks, guys. Good night. night. Night.